realize the level of home studios and volume of them here in Nashville is, is absurd. It's totally absurd. Today, I'm going to the music director and guitarist for Billy Ray Cyrus's home studio, Chris Condon. Chris Condon is a guitarist, an engineer, a producer, just like literally everyone here. He's got a, a an epic home studio. I'm not, it's epic. What do you want from me? Chris's studio is called LFT Studios. You can check it out at his website right down here, lftstudios.com. You can follow him on Instagram. I'll put all of his links. So he does engineering, producing. You can hire him as a session player for genres from pop to country to metal. I mean, the dude can shred. Go give Chris a follow down at his links in the description. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go give Chris a follow. All of his links are down in the description. You can hire him. You can follow him. I want to extend a thank you to everyone who watches these videos and for liking them and subscribing and sharing them with your friends. Because of the support from you guys, I am making a conscious effort to increase the quality of these videos, quantity of them, and the content. So I'm thinking maybe like a mix review kind of thing. Let me know if you guys have any interest in that down in the comments. Either way, I'm going to be making some investments and in new stuff to be able to make this happen so if you guys like this channel and this content and you would like to see that happen you can go to andrewmastersmusic.com slash donate you can make a financial contribution there's paypal there's crypto there's a p.o box if you guys want to send something to me and again if you can't do that you can always smash the like button for the youtube algorithm hit subscribe share the video with a friend all of that helps tremendously thank you guys so much let's go check out chris's epic home studio Yo. Hello. What's up, dude? How are you? Good. Dude, this is freaking sick. Right when you walk in the door. Thank you. This is awesome, man. So this is the, the living room portion of the house? Yeah. So this was the living room, and now it's the control room. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived in this house? I've been here a little over, well, maybe six years, a little over six years, maybe. Okay. So yeah. it's been a constant work in progress because at first everything was downstairs. Yeah. And then I was having issues just with drums being in the same room. And the more I started isolating stuff, I started realizing how important yeah, that it is. So moved this up here about a year ago and it's, it was a game changer because now, you know, I could really dial in the drums and everything else. So it's good to have separation. So what are you working on primarily? I see a, an amazing amount of guitar equipment, pedals, amps. Is yeah. that your main? So yeah, I guess by trade, I'm a guitar player. Do a lot of production here. People rent out the studio to do drum tracks and vocals and whatnot. I do a lot of track building. How long have you been engineering? Six, seven years. Wow, that's incredible, dude. You have really <laughs> racked up, yeah, kinda, quite, quite literally, kinda racked went up in, here. Went in on it. <laughs> this is amazing, man. Working, I do sessions around town, you know, and then producing. It's a good mix between the two, doing session work and then wearing the producer hat. Heck yeah, man. And engineering and whatnot. So it keeps it fun and interesting. Also, you learn a lot from doing each specific man, thing. Man, I, I can't stress that enough, you yeah. know, the, uh, the producing has taught me how to play guitar in a different way. Yes. On how to session better. Yeah. Because you start thinking whole picture and you stop thinking like a guitar player. Yeah, which is... And I think that's the key, right? Yeah, it's so <laughs> important. So with the layering and how to stay out of the way and what the song needs rather than just guitar self What's to play. Yeah. 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 So have you, how long have you been playing guitar? Oh, geez. Uh, 20 years, 20 plus. Wow. Long time. <laughs> it should be a lot better, I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any particular style of music that you really enjoy more than another? Oh man. As a guitarist? Well, I love the Pink Floyd soulful guitar playing. Ooh. The, uh, you know, the chicken picking stuff is a lot of fun. Yeah. Love that. And then, you know, the Mary pop type guitar stuff and the newer pop stuff like your Halsey and all that type stuff. I really get off on Shawn Mendes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm loving that type of guitar playing. And then the 
you know, in that falls like the Nile Rodgers, Corey Wong, like funk stuff wow. I love. Wow, heck so, yeah, dude. That's so awesome. What a wide variety. Kind of what I'm into. <laughs> that's sweet, dude. Well, we have, I guess, the interface. Yep. The antelope. So that's just conversion. And I'm hitting that 24 going in on the pre's and then eight line ins. So I have 24 hardwired preamps outboard hitting it and that all goes to the patch bay. And then everything, all the outboard EQs and compressors are all patched in. And uh, for guitar, this send and blend, which was a game changer, my buddy mm. Jeff King showed me that. And uh, so what that does is it, you could send two mics yep. to it and it sums it down to mono. Sure. Because usually when you're doing guitar tracks and you have a stereo thing, because a lot of people use a ribbon and a 57 whatever, and uh, a lot of mixers will just throw out that second guitar track because they don't want to be bothered with phase and whatnot. Sure. So you get it lined up in phase perfectly and then you got to blend. And I think it's a great thing because you get your mono signal. Yep. So you don't have to mess with all that. But what's great is that now I don't have to use two compressors and two EQs. Yep. I could EQ the mono signal and compress them on a signal. So like guitar chain wise, so that's a- Who makes that? That's Serpent Audio. And that, that I, that's just a killer piece of gear. And so downstairs, there's a cab mic'd up with a 160 and a 57, and that's piping into that. And right now I'm touching it with the DBX 530 taking a little bit of 3K out and a little bit of low rumble. Oh yeah. And then hitting a distressor. Oh, and, beautiful. You know, it's it's been working. So. Dude, look at this. This is such a beautiful <laughs> collection of oh, gear. Thank you. Oh, those Chandler Yeah, breeze. and that's, so that's uh, two guitars going to Chandler. So I use the TGs for guitar, the two mics. Yeah, and a send and blend. You go from the antelope into Pro Tools. Yeah. You know, if I'm engineering myself, if somebody else is engineer, I'll go down with the band and track. But, sure. you know, usually on sessions, I'll be engineering and tracking at the same time. But yeah, so I got Guitar World here and I could, you know, it's all piped in downstairs, which we'll go to in a minute. And I just, you know, mess with the amps. And, you know, also the other thing is the separation. Like I was saying, it's, it's a game changer because when you're... Yeah. When I first started, you know, I was miking the same room with the amp and it was never right because you're, you know, what you're hearing in the room and what the mic's picking up is two totally different sounds. Yeah, especially when you're getting like a mix, when you hear the rumble of the amp and it's like right through the door yeah. or something, it could be yeah, It messes with everything. So yeah. now I just get the true, and with vocals, putting them in the other room, it's just like you get what and you get what your outboard gear is doing. Yes. You can actually hear how it's hitting the compressor and what you're EQing. So what speakers are these? These are the Neumann 310s. So I dig them. They're, I guess, client pleasers. Yeah. You know, they, they sound good. They, they're, they're deceivingly humongous sounding. They sound oh, like yeah. it has a sub in here, but yeah. it does. Everyone says, is there a sub? And it's not. So they're, they're cool. I do dig them. Are these the Cappy? Mm hmm. The Cappy APIs? Yeah, so they're based here in Nashville. So, what we got, what I got patched in now is snare top, snare bottom, kick in, sub kick. Yeah, I think crotch hi hat. These are my overheads. These are the Skibby preamps, which are like the Flickinger pre's. Flickinger? So, I've never yeah. heard of that. <laughs> so, those are super cool. Send and blend. So, that's eight. So, then, and then I got DSer. This is a reamp box goes out to put like a DI signal into an amp. Yeah. And my two toms. More cappies. Uh, yep, more cappies. And okay, so you're loaded up with the cappies. Hallway mic. And then yeah, there's some neat stuff. And I got some other pre's that aren't hooked up that are, I could swap out. All right, so 13 cappies. We've got some couple Neve EQs, more the DBX, cappies. some API EQs. What yeah, are the, the inboard brutes, connections? What are these? Brutes. Those are like an optical, like an, you know, the LA-2A bit. But what's cool about these is they have the 250 shelf. So, you know, it's like a detector circuit where it doesn't detect below 250. 
Oh, cool. So, you know, like compressors, especially like opticals, they get so squashy yeah. in the low end. And this you just... And you can selectively use it. You can turn it off and on. So it's great. I love this thing. All these. These are great. That's awesome. They're awesome on vocals and uh, uh, bass, of course. Yeah, my acoustics. I always put acoustics. So. And what are those two at the end there? These are the Ingram Engineering. They're Tilt EQ. I'm actually trying to sell them. So if anyone wants to buy them. Yeah, so it's not quite a pull tech. It's a tilt. So it's... It, like doesn't, it doesn't do the, the pull tech thing with the hump. It's just yeah. more of a shelf. Okay. And what are, what are those called again? Ingram Engineering uh, EQ50s. Ingram. So Seesaw, Seesaw, Tilt EQ. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ingram Not a shelf. Engineering EQs. Hit Chris up on Instagram <laughs> if you want to buy those. Yeah. You got the 160s, the classics? Yes. Those, those are, are great. Sick. So what that's kind of where on? kick and snare, ah. kick and snare top kind of live there. I just kiss it a little. Overheads, that lives on overheads. I love it. What is that? I've never Best seen that. of Wolfram limiter. So it's like it's two 1176s, but what's great about it is, well, a lot of things. The biggest thing that sold me is it's got the mix. So I'm at 50%, so it's more like a parallel blend. And then it's got also the shelving. So I'm shelving at 120, where uh... it's not detecting that. And then it goes down to two to one. So it's like, the ultimate 1176. So this is all one rack. Mm -hmm. It's a stereo Got unit. It. Got and it. then you can link them or not. So sweet. Yeah. So those just live on the overheads and it's a nice Volfram nice. limiter. Yeah. That's IGS. They make great stuff. Uh, I got the TGs, the Abbey Roads, and then two Germaniums. And usually I run like keys through that. Oh, cool. And then. These are the, the, uh, the radial sends, so I can run any signal through pedals or yeah, reverb yeah, yeah. tank or whatever. So it's just like, it's an insert, ultimately. Oh, cool. And then got the distressors. Distressors, amazing. And then that's just the here back, my, uh, you know. Is that Furman? Or that's the Behringer. Oh, Behringer. Oh, they cool. make great, it's like a, it's like a here back, but yeah, yeah. it's 16 channels. And then is this the B rack down at the bottom here? Yeah, that's, that's like, like the that's... Uh, the graveyard. <laughs> so, but, uh, swapping out stuff. But yeah, I get the Shadow Hills and that's RTZ awesome. is awesome. It's like a really great Neve type thing. Um, nice. The Great Rivers. So those are Hairball. Hairball, okay. So those are 1176s, you know, run of the mill. Uh, and then this thing's cool. I just retubed it. It's the retro power strip, so it's like it's like a pull tech EQ in the front, and then you have a compressor and a preamp, and it's it's very fat sounding. It's just a channel strip, and then these BBEs are kind of funny. Are they pre's? What are those? They're they're Sonic uh, exciters or audio exciters, whatever you call it. They're kind of junky, but what would you run through something like well, that? Well. <laughs> So I got these on Black Friday for like 50 bucks each. And I saw John McBride on the Slate walkthrough of Blackbird uh -huh. Drums. He's using these with like a Fairchild and the console through this, the most expensive gear. So I'm running kicks, snare, and toms, and it just kind of focuses the sound. I, okay. I don't know. They're kind of a throwaway piece of gear, but they tighten things up. Gives a little punch, yeah, just like Tom's. Tom's like them because it takes out the boxy scoopy, you know, it scoops oh, out a little sweet. of that Sweet cardboard. All right, and then what these amps over here. So these are you, dude, you have so many amps. I have a lot of amps. That's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, so um, I just got this actually like two or three days ago because uh, Dan Huff and Brent Mason, they I always saw them in the racks, but that's the old PV Classic 50 I got for 300 bucks on Marketplace, so I had to buy oh, it. Oh, nice. And it's actually really awesome. Uh, divided by 13, FTR 37, that is just incredible. So it, it's really clean, it takes pedals well, it's super fat, mm. I love it. This and one's chimey, it's an EL84 type thing, so it's a little thinner, Okay. but it's sweet sound. This is Marsh, I got a bunch of these amps. This is a guy in Florida, he makes awesome stuff. This is a deluxe reverb, uh, clone thing with a dumbbell circuit, but I pretty much just use the deluxe reverb side and I, I love this amp. And then we got some cheapo Pultex, which I really love. Uh, 
Jeez, what, what right? was that? Warm audio? The and... warm and then the Clark Technic. And primarily like snare top, I'll send that to. And then uh, kick or bass and always vocal. I love them on vocals because they oh, take yeah. the honk out. So that's that. And then here's an old Princeton. Uh, I just got that redone. My buddy Justin Butler rebuilt it and it sounds incredible. It's an old Ampeg jet. And is that for the Ampeg for bass? No, it's, it's a guitar. Put it on guitar. And Justin Butler also uh, redid this. And he changed uh, because the inputs are both normal stock and he tweaked one of them to lean it out and make it punchier. And uh, the tremolo on this thing is amazing. Such killer amps. Are you using the HX effects too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, thing's I love, pretty sick, right? I love this thing so much. So let's go into signal chain here. The guitar goes in, it hits a JHS buffer. Then the Cali RC booster goes through the chain. This is I'm treating as the master clock. And this clocks to this, which clocks to this. So on a session, it keeps it real quick. So I just tap in the tempo or dial it in and it communicates with those because they're, they're time-based. Uh, so this has yeah. like a lot of crazy tremolo filtery stuff for like intros or uh, turnarounds. It's a cool little effect. Yeah. But it's all clocked in. Justin Butler also. Justin best. Butler, tell me about this guy. Oh, he's the best. He, uh, he does amp mods and repairs and pedal mods and this is his volume pedal. Everyone in Nashville knows that these uh, these blue pedals. Oh, sick. That's the trademark, but they're awesome. He has a buffer built in. What's a buffer? A buffer just drives your signal because with true bypass ah. pedals, your signal will degrade. So a lot of pedals have buffers, but the new trend is the true bypass. But cable length, after a certain amount of feet, you start Got degrading the signal, it. so buffers that's compensate. Cool. Yeah. So boss pedals always have buffers, but a lot of these other ones are true bypass. I love that I constantly see the EP boost in everyone's chain. Yeah. That was that's... like one of the first things that I bought <laughs> that I love because it's just one knob and it's yeah, just Yeah, that's more. such a great little boost. This is just stuff I've been messing around with. Like the the uh, the, the pog was here. Uh-huh. And then I wanted this on there, so I took that out and put the little tinder octave uh cool. which is it's a it's a pog ultimately, but you don't. And I'm missing some of the things that that does yeah. with this. Like it's got the swells and the that pog is crazy. Yeah, I love it. So, but you know the real estate game. So it's I'm always switching back and forth. Just as exciting as all that is the Elisis Q25. Well, that that's <laughs> where it all starts and ends. You know, <laughs> you gotta have something to <laughs> smash with your fingers. You know. <laughs> Yeah. That's oh, cool. and then the tube tech. We forgot about oh, that. That's goodness. like that's the that's the money maker right there. That thing is incredible. Yeah. Vocals, obviously. Yeah. I mean, that's vocals and bass. Bass. That's, oh, okay, that's the jam. But yeah, the vocals always. And then what's this big thing over here? The this CC is Electronics. the um, Juno. It's their version of a Juno. It's oh. a brain. So I'm just piping in. I really like it. That Sounds great. Cool. Yeah. So Deep it's, Mind 12. And then what computer are you running? That's the Mac, the trash can. Oh, you got the trash can. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, Go yeah. down there. So this what is what's up this week. TRS, Vela, I, I love this thing. This is cool. I awesome. guess it's a Gretsch type thing they said. Yeah. So that's cool. Hollow body, Hagstrom, semi hollow. That's cool. The, uh, the Dan Electro. Whatever this is. Great for slide. Oh, I like it a nice. lot. Telly I bought, my friend Kelly Sams built this body, did all Woo. that, and then I put it together. I love that thing. I think it's gorgeous. It's a piece of crap. Squire. <laughs> hey Cause, man. Because I'm not a I bass love player. Squire. <laughs> it's cool that you have them on the wall and not on the floor on a boat. Because I'm constantly moving my boat around and it I, drives I me nuts. I did. I just did this a few weeks ago because I'm sick and tired because this place is so cramped as it is. Yeah. And I just, it looks cool, but it's space saver. Thank this you. This is the control room. Mm -hmm. You've got other rooms. What are the other rooms? Okay, so we have, let's go. Okay, let's go check it out. All right, so all of this, your whole house is essentially the studio. Yes, sir. I built this for vocals and acoustics. So this is like the spare bedroom, or this is mm -hmm. one of the bedrooms. Yeah. 
and you've literally turned the whole thing into a nice spacious booth. Pretty much, yeah, it's, it's real dead and with the cloud over here, always treat overhead. Yes. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So it's just, it's pretty dead and uh, you know, acoustic, this is acoustic world and then next door in the other room, we'll do a scratch vocal, but this is, uh, you know, I'll have an aux guy here tracking. Carpet on the mics, on the music stand. Genius. <laughs> Less reflection. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is a uh, Area 51. It's like a like a 251 clone type thing. That's what's up right now. Who who makes this? Oh man, you had to ask. <laughs> uh, a, a oh wait, ADK. ADK. A lot more <laughs> guitars. Yeah, this yes. is crazy. A couple more of the collections. So uh, some Les Pauls, the Armin, some Strats, Tellys. Got this SG. I'm really liking. Well, blues hawk, that's cool. Whenever I need to throw down. Ah, there. sick. <laughs> yeah, so a couple, couple tools in here. Sweet. Yeah, thanks. So that's that's that. Tr a tracking room one. This is like usually where where it would end. You know, like <laughs> one room. And then my bedroom. <laughs> oh, Which right. I just uh, uh, I kind of threw up a mic here just to have it for. Uh, you know, a multitude of things. So, scratch vocal, I wouldn't track a real vocal in here, but gotcha. scratch vocal, or if I need to have a steel player mm. or anything else, a horn player or something, I, I would put it here because the line runs. So, whatever. It's just another tracking space. Nothing nice. fancy. But and I, I did, I did throw up some treatment to help it oh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, dude. So this is just scratchable because yeah, there's no ceiling treatment. Got it's just it. kind of thrown up. But like a steel would be great here or a second guitar player or whatever, you know? And then is the, what's this, the blue bottle? Or what's oh, this is the, the baby, the baby bottle blue mic. It, it, it's nice. fine. Yeah, so, so that, that, that works. And then we've got the hear back here, so it's cool. And there, there's no bleed. I never hear any bleed between the rooms, which is surprising, but someone could be singing their butts off and the acoustic mic doesn't pick it up, so. Dude, I love it. Super, it's, super efficient use of the rooms. Like now yeah. you got another booth, another, and since it's ethernet, that is super nice for the headphones. Yeah. We have that. And then I guess let's go down to downstairs. What's, what's next, drummer? What's up, Riley? Yeah. So here is the tracking room. Yeah, so this is where we do the full band where all the guys come down and track. This is amazing. So you did you do all of the walls? What treatment sort of work did you do in here? Okay, so the walls, place of Mount Juliet, pallet warehouse. Super oh. cheap if you need bundles of this stuff, you get crates of it, so cheap. So this room was like 100, 150 bucks to do it all. Oh my gosh. Stained them, just put them up. It was an aesthetic thing, but I think it helps sonically. Yeah, you know? at least diffuses everything, yeah. for sure. And then in the ceiling, uh, these are all 703. That's an annoying okay, job. Okay, so you you made all of the, the panels, the yeah. ceiling tiles, So you take ceiling panels. tiles, yeah, and then I just cut out the same size with two inch 703 and just put it up and wrapped it in fabric. Yeah, that sounds like a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> But holy cow, what a what an amazing difference it must make because you did the entire ceiling. Yeah, because that, that ceiling tile is just like a mirror. It's like king king, you know, it just it's ah. it's all reflective. So this is it deadened it up a lot. And it actually I learned a lot from doing all the treatment. Is that like before there was any treatment, the room was really live. Mm -hmm. But when I would record it, it would sound small, and then I treated it, and then the drums got really big interesting it's funny how that works because they don't yeah. sound as big in the room but under mics yeah there's less cancellation yep and it just it opened them up oddly enough and then i have three lines run from the here backs one two three so i'll put a keyboard player here bass player guitar player wow everyone could look at each other and track so here's a couple amps i have a couple yeah <laughs> <laughs> Some of the collection. Music Man, Vox, Mattress, Marshall, Roland. Is this the, um, gosh, I'm, I always screw this up. I always say Champ, but it's not the Champ. This, it's the... I, ha I have a Tweed Champ upstairs. This is uh, this is actually a pretty junky amp. It's a Bronco. Bronco, oh wow. <laughs> it's just a solid state practice amp. But uh, Silvertone's awesome. 
It's one of my favorite amps to record with, actually, for all your night game and 80s synthwave type tones, stereo, jazz chorus thing. Heck awesome. Yeah. Some match those fenders. So that's a couple. Uh, got a bunch more in the other room. So it's become a really big problem. Dude, this thing is so cool. This oh, your cool light. light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. so that's a thanks. That's a it's an LED thing, and I put uh, chrome duct tape on the backside oh, to kind of cool. treat it like Reflect a mirror. It. Yeah. So now it's got Smart. a little little vibe. It's like yeah, a this is super sushi nice. Sushi restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So then we got the drums. Let's see here. I was going with a uh, kick out, kick in, and two snare tops, but I've reduced them and I'm liking it a lot. So there's a Telefunken kick in. I'm loving that. I did have a D6, but this beat it. So that and the Solomon sub kick. What's the Telefunken model, do you know? It's the M82. M M Eighty M82 or M8Z, I don't even know. M82. Whatever that is. So and it's great. It's made for kick drum and it has like EQ curves. Love it. That's right, because the snare one they make was the M80, isn't that right? I believe so. So the M80, M82, that makes sense. Yeah, so that that thing's just great. 57 snare top, standard issue. I think it's SM82 on the bottom snare. 421s for the toms and the crotch, 121s on the overheads. Oh, beautiful. Um, this is a stager ribbon, stereo ribbon. Uh, the, the great mics in uh, Nashville, really cool stuff. And then I have a hallway mic up here, which is like my John Bonham deal. Oh, but up there, sick. you know, you close the door, it's like a faux reverb chamber, it just gives it depth. A little bit more throw, so. Where is it? Way up there. Whoa! Yeah, that is. So. That is very creative. <laughs> this is like, yeah. you know, when you're a kid and you want like a jam, <laughs> your basement to be a jam room. That is what it is. <laughs> this is the dream. <laughs> we'll go out here. It's a mess, so don't mind it, but this is where the, um. There's more. The amp room is. Here's some snares. Ah, it's a whole cluster out here, but. This is a amp room I built. There's a 412 <laughs> mic'd up right now, and that's got the 160 and the uh, 57. Then there's a bass cab mic'd up too. I usually use like an RE20 on that. But that's got four different speakers. Right now I'm running a G12H30. And what what was the mics again? 57 so it's a Bear Dynamic 160. Oh, cool. Which is a ribbon and then a 57 standard. Yeah, that 160. I just got two of those. They're amazing. I'm so excited yeah. for it. They're great on overheads. I want to get them for overheads because I got low ceilings. Yeah. It would be a great addition, but that's great. I think they used it on like Electric Ladyland, those guitar tones. Yeah. So. And then look at these tapestries. This is so cool. <laughs> I got a lot of pedals. This is fun. So. Whoa, pedal drawer. So, yeah, just, uh, my I gosh. have a pretty serious addiction with pedals. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That's just the drawer too. <laughs> and there's more in the cabinet over there. So well, you've you've done an amazing job. And then Thank you're, you. you know, you do your session work and then you also you, you're the guitar player and musical director for Billy Ray Cyrus. Right, right. And then you do like remote work as well. So Yeah, so Kind of everything. I'll do whatever, I guess. <laughs> just a musical horror. What's your website again? So I can remember. So the studio website is lftstudios.com. Okay. And then mine is chrisconnandguitar.com, which are both being updated. So Sweet. check back in a little bit. So if people want to um, inquire about either hiring you to do remote work or booking the studio if they live here in Nashville or any of that stuff they can find you through the websites. You could or just hit me up on Instagram, Chris Condon Guitar, I think is the Instagram and okay. our Facebook. Sweet. And my email is chriscondonguitar at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. I'll put all those links down in the description. Thank you. And uh, yeah, everybody follow Chris and go check him out. And if you need some remote work done, this dude's got an unbelievable setup. So, dude, thank you so much for having us out. And oh, man, it's been an honor. Showing me around. Thank you for coming. 
Yeah, so man, much fun. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thank you. Later.